Hi, it's Dia. Today I'm happy to say that I'm going to be reviewing the Arteza 60 set of gouache paint and the pads of watercolor paper that Arteza sent me. Um, the the paper is very heavy. It's 140 pound paper and the gouache colors right off the bat, I can tell you uh, it, it's a gorgeous, lovely set. The light fastness of this gouache paint is actually indicated on the box. I'm really pleased to see that. For anybody who doesn't know what gouache is, it's a more opaque form of watercolor paint. Now here's a quick look at the pads of paper. They're glued at the top and you can see that the rest of the pad is loose. The paper is thick. It's got a lovely tooth. And like I said before, it's 140 pounds. Really nice. I put the gouache colors on an old acrylic palette. So you can see that there's some, what of a mess. I got as much of the old paint off that I could, but you can see the little tiny swatches of the Arteza gouache. First thing I did was take every one of the colors and first put it very deep on the top and then mix a little water in and brought it down in a little swivel or squiggle on the bottom so you could see how they blend with water. So the first thing I did was to test the paper's integrity was I took a pretty big brush and took quite a bit of water and dampened the paper. I dried it with this really cool little fan that I will link below. In fact, I'll link everything below. The brushes, the Arteza um, set, and the paper because I was really happy with everything that I worked with. So right here, I'm taking the paper. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm taking the paint. I use three different colors and I'm just sort of putting it down haphazardly on the area that I already dampened slightly and you can see that it's fanning and spreading out really nicely because I wanted to see how the paper interacted with quite a bit of water. You can see that I'm splashing some more water on here too. Now what I'm going to do is draw on top of it. I'm going to make a little tiny space scene and I'm going to see how uh, opaque the watercolors actually are. So right here I'm quickly drawing the moon. And I'm going to go over the moon several times. The first color I used was titanium white and now I'm using light yellow and I just want to see the opacity um, and the buildability of the layers here. I also want to see the integrity of the paper because I am wetting the brush every single time that I go in to use another color. So I'm going over and over and over in several layers. And so far the paper's holding up really nicely. There's no warping, there's no bending at this point. And the first two layers that I used, meaning the first time that I dampened and I splattered, were the, the paper was pretty wet. Now I'm going over what I already did. And yes, I do let the layers dry a tiny bit and I used that fan for assistance um, just because I don't want there to be that um, fady, uh, warpy kind of look that I did in the background colors. Watercolor is known for that luminous, uh, see-through uh, blendability and gouache is a little bit different. Yes, you can get those effects, but I wanted to see also how much opacity we could get here. So I'm taking some darker colors now and creating some craters and shadows. I also want to take uh, some of the lighter shades and see if I can go over the top of the colors that I already put down. So I figured I would make a little rocket that's going to be pure white and put some red on top of the white to see how those colors interact. And the white is, is pretty opaque. It, nothing's going to be like oil paint or even acrylic. And yes, you can mix acrylic with water. So those are similar. But this, these gouache paints, the lighter colors do leave a very nice opaque look. 
now I'm picking some more of the lighter colors up and I'm mixing it with water and I'm splattering the whole image here just to see if I could get some of the similar effects that I've used with other, other paints. And yes, I created what I thought was a really cool little picture with these gouache paints that I'm not really familiar with. I had a, I had a lot of fun. Now I took a picture out of the artist's edition of Everyday Magic and I thought that I would try to use as many colors as I possibly could. And to test the paper also, I figured I would be really intense with the water. So the background, I'm going to take one of the lighter, well, I can't even say lighter blues, but a combination of two, two of the blues and I'm going to, and I was going to cover as much of the background as I possibly could to make a, a very light watercolor-esque blue sky. So I used several different shades of green for the leaves and I decided that I wasn't going to make all the leaves in the image green. I thought that the leaves on top would be nice, almost like a, a mixture of different greens. Um, some of them very light and looking like they're in the background, some of them almost like a forest green. And then I would blend some, well, a mixture of several of the browns. And what I found is that the paints are very blendable, have a relatively good opacity to them. And being unfamiliar for the most part with gouache, they are definitely more opaque than watercolors, but in all fairness, they're supposed to be. I looked up gouache and they they have more of a of a, a sediment mixed in for the paints to become a little more dense and a little more um, opaque. So the leaves on the bottom, I decided to make, I don't know why, a an almost pink um, flamingo color. Now you can see here that the brown is really covering up the lines from the coloring book. And there, it, this set is just so nice to work with. The variety of colors, I can't imagine needing more than 60 colors because you can, you can obviously mix them all together. And the white, well, there's two different whites. There's titanium white and basic white. And between the two of them, you can mix it with any color and of course, lighten up the shades. The other nice thing, similar to watercolor paints, is that even though you squeeze them out of the tube and you put them on your palette, if they dry like, water, like watercolor paints, you can go right back in, wet them and use them again. Unlike acrylic, which when it dries, as you saw from my palette, it leaves a big mess on your palette forever. Although I love the look of watercolor paints, I never really figured out how to incorporate them into the type of drawings that I do. And although I like using them, the ease of use is incredible. You either have a palette and you rinse your brush and there's no smell and it dries pretty quickly. It was a little too see-through for me. And gouache, I don't know why. I, it's not that well known. It's not as well known as um, watercolor or acrylic or even oil. Um, I'm so glad I found these. I'm so glad they sent these to me. And surprise, I'm going to be giving away this set. The lovely Arteza company gave me the set to give away during this video. And... It's easy peasy to enter. You have to follow, subscribe, like, or favorite either on Etsy, Instagram, Facebook, or here on YouTube. You also have to like this video and leave a comment. If your comment mentions that you like my secret giveaways, you are in twice.
P.S. Anyone who's watching at this point in the video, just know that I appreciate you so much. Mwah. Now a little more about the paints. Like I said before, there's a light fastness information guide on the side of the box. And it looks like, well, not it looks like most of the paints are very light fast. There is also a differential in the transparency. Some of them are completely transparent and then some of them um, are barely transparent. So you can look on the side of the box and tell which ones are going to be see-through or not. Also, there are about, I think I counted 11, I could be wrong, there might be 12, uh, frosted colors. Everything from gold to bronze to silver. There's a green. The eucalyptus green is shiny. It's gorgeous. Um, and then the colors not only have names, like, of course, burnt sienna, ice blue, titanium white, etc., uh, but they have numbers, so you can keep track that way also. Now, I started to use the black here on this little, I don't know what he is, he's sort of a sparrow finch type of little fat budgie. Um, well, he's not a budgie because he's not a hookbill. He's a, he's more of a finch or a sparrow, but I started to use the black, as you can see on his, on his head, and then I got lighter and lighter and lighter, mixing that same black with water. And these pets are just, these paints are just lovely to work with. I would love to use that 140 pound paper in my next book, but I don't know how that would work out. I don't know if Arteza sells individual sheets. Like all of Arteza products, these paints are non-toxic and ACMI certified so. Oh, and by the way, they have a matte finish as you can probably see by now during the video and they dry really quickly. In the beginning, you saw me use that fan, but I used a heavy, a heavy coat of water at first just so I could test out the paper. Um, Arteza also has a 100% satisfaction guarantee that this product or any of their products will perform to your expectations. And they're so nice to work with. And a simple request, if you're not happy, allows for a replacement or money back. Although I personally can't see why that would ever happen. Um, as you can probably tell, I really like to work with them and I really like their products and am basically amazed at the prices. Um, not sure how they make such excellent products at such reasonable prices, but I love it. It gets their products into many more hands. Um, I don't have a, a predisposition for more expensive or cheaper, but I love when excellent products are less money um, because more people get to use them. And this whole set costs approximately $40. And yes, you'll have a chance to win it in the giveaway, but I hope you check out their site because they have so many wonderful things. Um, great price for a super set. And getting back to price for a couple seconds, um, I use different brushes um, during different videos. Uh, I like everything from a brush that, a couple brushes actually that I got at Target. Some of them I got at Jerry's Artorama. I have a few Kalinsky brushes and I have a few brushes that literally cost me $2.99 and I truly don't like one more than another. They each have their purpose and they each do their specific job. So I know I've said this before, but you don't have to have super expensive anything, any kind of art products to make really, really beautiful art. So thank you, thank you for watching. I appreciate all of you so much. And don't forget, I'm giving away this lovely set. So all you have to do is follow or subscribe, like or favorite me anywhere. You can do it here on YouTube, Facebook. I also have that um, DL Hand coloring gallery. I'd love to invite you if you'd like to join. You can like, favorite, subscribe on Instagram or even on Etsy. Uh, then comment and like below. 
And if you say, I love your secret giveaways, you are in twice. So Arteza, I don't know how you do it, but I give this set of 60 gouache colors a thumbs up for sure. I love this set so much. I've never used an entire set of gouache before, and this was a wonderful introduction for this medium. And I have to say that I think that I'm going to be use this, using this quite a bit. I, it seems to have become, well, not become, it, it almost seems like the missing link. It's the thing that I've almost been looking for that I didn't know that I was looking for. I'm not, I don't dislike them, but I'm not a huge fan of markers, whether they're water-based or alcohol-based, I prefer using a brush. I like the medium of paint. So this is the, this, this is the missing link. So thanks again, Arteza, for being the introduction for me to gouache. So the next thing that I did here was finish the berry. And then I used my favorite, um, I, I think this is a gel pen. A, it's a, yeah, it's a Signo gel pen. I just covered the uh, lines on the wings of the two little berry fairies and added some extra cute little details. Well, in my opinion, they were, they were, they were cute because otherwise, um, Fairies don't, fairy wings don't seem to lend themselves to have black outlines. So I sort of made the illusion of them being a little bit see-through. I didn't spend a whole lot of time here, but I had a really good time doing it anyway. Here's, here's the little extra details. And I made some little feathery veins going through and filled in the background a tiny bit. I had a really, I had a really good time with this picture with these paints. And in my next video, I will be using Prismacolor pencils and a couple other Prismacolor artists supplies also. And I'll be coloring in my Amazon version of Everyday Magic. And thank you for everyone who's purchased it so far that made it a number one new release on Amazon. Now, I almost forgot to color these little berries. I personally don't know what they actually are, but I thought to keep the color scheme, I would, I would almost do a purpley black on some of them. So it's kind of like a, a black olive color, although I didn't in my head think that they were olives. I thought that they were maybe pokeweed, kind of like that pokeweed berry color. Um, and also not do them all the same color, but make a few of them a green so it sort of uh, pulls the whole image together. I love these paints. Everything that I needed was in this 60 set. I, I don't know if they make them into bigger sets, but I loved it. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, once again, thumbs up for the set. Don't forget the giveaway and I will see you soon. Thank you so much. See you later, bye. P.S. All the information that you need for the giveaway or to purchase any of the items that I've mentioned is in the information box below. I will see you soon. Good luck in the giveaway. Bye.